Have you ever been to an art gallery or a museum and kind of looked around and thought, wow, my stuff is better than this crap. But then one day you get told that your art is going to be in a museum. Well, that happened to me last year and I'm going to tell you how that happened and what happened to my career as an artist because of it. So you might remember the big panel carving I did a few years ago commemorating the martyrdom of King Edmund of East Anglia. It took a really long time so it was a really big risk because I didn't know if it was going to sell or not or what the hell was even going to happen to it. I made a YouTube video about it, there's a link down below if you want to see that and then I posted it on Facebook, I posted it on Instagram and I got loads of really really nice encouraging comments about it which was great. So kind of sweating about wasting my time and being a bit kind of desperate to sell it, I did something that was a bit out of my comfort zone and I contacted a local newspaper to see if they wanted to cover the story and sent them an email that was something like this. Uh, excuse me, uh, I made this thing and I saw a need free publicity. Want to help? Obviously I worded it better than that, but that was the gist of it. Thankfully they replied pretty quickly and it said, yeah, of course, we'd love to. So I was really expecting a rejection, as you know I often do when it comes to this sort of thing. <laughs> so then like my heart is like suddenly going... Pff, pff. Uh, and then uh, further down the email, it said something along the lines of, we're going to send a photographer around to your place in a couple of days, and then we'll have a telephone interview to talk to you about it so we can get all the details. Now, if you know me well, you know that I really hate telephone calls. And uh, I, I don't know what it is, they just, uh, they really give me anxiety. I don't know if it's just talking to someone without seeing their face, just makes you feel really weird. But yeah, I, uh, I absolutely hate them. So at this point, being the kind of strange person that I am, I'd, <laughs> I sort of hovered around the possibility of not uh, accepting the interview and uh, just kind of ignoring the email altogether so that I could just stay in my comfortable little bubble for a, a bit longer. Uh, but then, you know, something came over me and I thought, you know, like I've come this far, it would be kind of dumb to not do something about it. So I clicked send on the email and that was it. Luckily the phone interview was really simple, as you'd probably expect it to be. And so even though I had a mini heart attack, it turned out really well in the end. Although still, please don't call me. So a couple of days later, the newspaper article goes out there and I decide to post a image of the carving on Facebook at the same time to a local Facebook group, not to my own page, but a local Facebook group in Bury St Edmunds, the town where the carving is kind of based. Little did I know that those two things actually work together really well. So there were people on the Facebook group saying stuff like, oh, I saw this in the paper, so it really helped the popularity of the carving boom a lot more than I was expecting. So fast forward a couple of weeks and I get a random email from someone saying, hey, I saw your carving in the Berry Free Press, which was the newspaper, and I saw the YouTube video and I love it. And I was just wondering how much it would be to buy it. So I'm sort of sitting down there scribbling down trying to figure out the amount of time it took me to design and carve and paint it and all the other stuff that I had to do to it to make it come together and came up with a price and emailed it back to them. So the buyer comes to my house to look at the carving and almost immediately says, yes, I want to buy that. And I cannot tell you how much of a relief that was, but also just how much elation I felt just hearing those words and knowing that like, wow, okay, I didn't waste my time. And also this is going to go to someone who really appreciates it. So that was such a great feeling. So he asked me to put some hooks on the back so he could hang it on the wall and he was going to come and get it in a few days. Now, if you're someone who sells stuff, if you're an artist or a maker or whatever, you'll know that this is like the dream transaction. Someone comes to you with a very succinct purpose. They're like, yes, I want that thing. I really love it. Please let me buy it from you. It's absolutely perfect. And the guy who bought it, John and I, are now really good friends as a result. So that's pretty cool as well. And as if that wasn't enough, when he came back a few days later to get the carving, he told me that 
there's probably a commission coming my way from a society that he was a member of, a local society. And that just totally caught me off guard. I just sold this carving for the biggest amount that I'd ever sold anything for before. Um, and now he's telling me that I've got another bunch of work coming my way as a result of it. And I was just like, okay, like this might not be real or it might not be true, but I mean, what can I do? I've got to go along and just see what happens. Generally, and maybe unfortunately, I've kind of conditioned myself to being really pessimistic when it comes to people saying that they want me to make stuff for them. Because probably about 80 to 85% of inquiries that I get to make things just never happen. Either they disappear when I mention a price or someone will ask for something and then not follow up from my email that I send them or, or something other, some other stuff. And uh, basically artists and makers, people who create stuff, get ghosted a lot by people who want stuff. It happens all the time. Now, unbeknownst to me, at the time of finishing that carving, I actually did it during the thousand year anniversary of the creation of the Abbey of St. Edmundsbury. Uh, the place where King Edmund's shrine was, and one of the biggest Benedictine monasteries in all of Europe, like a massive pilgrimage site. Um, now I'd like to tell you that as a sly and cunning man, I did that on purpose. I did not. It was pure luck. Now fast forward a few weeks and sure enough an email came through to make a carving worth a thousand pounds for a local society to celebrate the aforementioned thousand year anniversary of the Abbey. So uh, it actually did happen in the end. So I get the carving finished, there's a link to it below in the description. And to my delight they're really happy with it, very pleased with it, and that is one of the best feelings you can get for not just like art, but like hard work. If you do something and you put everything into it and people are pleased with it and you can see them smiling and you're there in that very moment while they're looking at it, um, that's one of the best feelings I think you can get. Now at the time I hand this over, I don't really know what's gonna happen to the carving. The first one I knew went to John, private collector, so it's hanging up in his house, right? This one goes to a society, so I'm thinking, is it going in an office? Is it gonna be in someone's house? Is it gonna be part of some kind of ritualistic Ceremony? Well, none of those. And in fact, this is where the third surprise comes in. Third? I think it's third. So I get another email from my friend John, and he tells me that the carving that I made of St Edmund and the Abbey carving that I got the commission for afterwards are both going to be in Moises Hall Museum as part of their thousand year celebrations of the Abbey. So this was another huge bombshell, and with no disrespect to Moises Hall, this isn't a uh, place that's as famous as the Tate Gallery or something like that but it is a very important museum in a really affluent area of Suffolk and it's in a building that's 900 years old. This is the absolutely perfect place to have my two carvings about Barry St Edmunds uh, to be situated. It's absolutely perfect place. So of course now I'm patiently waiting for the dates of when my work will be in the museum and kind of what the display will be like and everything. The answer is that the museum did an amazing job and they made my carvings probably look about 10 times better than they actually are in this really nice ornate glass case alongside some of the artifacts from the Abbey. So my carvings were next to things that were, you know, five, six hundred, seven hundred thousand years old, which is like very flattering to be put next to that kind of stuff. So how did this affect my life as an artist? Well, a fair bit in some ways. But in other ways that you might expect it would affect it, not really that much. You think to yourself, wow, my stuff's at a museum, loads of people are talking about it, and it's on display for everyone to see. So obviously this exposure is going to make my career just like totally take off. Nope. Well, okay, at least probably get a couple of, you know, sizable commissions from it, right? Nope. Sometimes I wonder if it's just that my art didn't resonate with enough people or maybe it just wasn't the right setting to have people thinking in their mind about hey I want to commission this guy you know or for me to be kind of kind of noticed in that sort of salesy kind of way but of course that's totally okay I mean I got my art in a museum 
for free. I mean, I didn't have to pay anything. In fact, I was paid to make the art, and then the museum wanted it in there. So why would I deny that? And uh, Dan from Moises Hall Museum did an amazing job making them look so good. And uh, I owe him a lot for that. So now, another good part. I decided after the exhibition ended to sort of try and keep the flow going to arrange some demonstrations in Barry St Edmunds. Partly to get my work out there more and kind of ride that wave, but also just to talk to people about my art, which is something I was really afraid of. It was another kind of anxiety issue. And uh, just seeing if I could keep people engaged enough to want to listen to me. Which is easy on YouTube. Well, not keeping people engaged, but it's easy to talk on YouTube because I'm just talking to a camera. But out there, when you've got lots of people surrounding you and asking you lots of questions, it's completely different. So I contact my friend John about this, and he springs up and comes to the rescue once again. And uh, <laughs> basically manages to arrange six demos in Barry St Edmunds, where I'm going to be carving and showing people what I'm doing. And at the same time, John was standing next to me because he works as a tour guide for the Barry St Edmunds Tour Guides. There's a link in the description to them as well. And he was doing a talk and telling people about what I was doing while I was doing it. So it was helpful to have that other person there to kind of <laughs> be a shield to help my uh, help my anxiety a little bit. The reception I got was awesome. I demoed in some cafes, in a cathedral, in an old guild hall, and on the actual grounds of the abbey itself. And uh, people really liked it. I had a really good time. I was actually carving a gift for the Church of St Edmund and uh, I thought it was you know, only justified to be carving something that I was going to give away considering I got all the venues for free. So it was kind of like giving something back to the town. And I talked to all kinds of people, uh, families just going for a day trip and buying their food and stuff. Tourists from all around the world who had visited Barry St Edmunds because it's quite a popular tourist place in Suffolk. Uh, I've talked to a lord. A fair few people who run events and organisations in Barry St Edmunds. And my favourite was a little kid who came up just to tell me that their, their favourite colour was green and their favourite animal was a unicorn. And I know that sounds kind of silly but it really helped in a time to kind of relax my nerves because it was just like such a weird happening and that's the kind of thing that happens when you put yourself out there in the world like things that you don't expect to happen happen so so now you're thinking ah, okay so now this is where you're going to start getting all your commissions nope 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 i did actually sell some woodblock prints i think three of them of st edmund while i was there and then a few months after the demos i got a commission from someone who heard from me, from someone who saw me doing the carving and took one of my business cards. So I'm really grateful for those things happening. But honestly, and in a little bit of a corny way, I'm afraid, I, I actually really enjoyed the experience. I thought I wouldn't. And by the end of it, I got a lot more comfortable talking to people about what I was doing and why I was doing it than I was before. So because of that it was it was definitely worth it so what's the lesson that maybe personal development is more important than monetary gain um, though having both of them would I guess make it sweeter <laughs> big thanks to my friend John and Moises Hall Museum and the people at the Berry Society who set off a chain of events that honestly changed my life for the better. And of course, for all the places in Bury St Edmunds that hosted me and all the really nice people who came along to talk to me, I don't think I had one bad comment or anything like that, so that was really good. <laughs> Finally, thank you to my three loyal patrons, Mary Sue Klein, John Aitken, and Scott Gordon. You guys helped to push me make better videos every time. Cheers, guys.